I guess your question was you want cargo blimps, and I mean, you brought up which wind is really first. They're unstable because their center of lift and gravity is behind them. Or their center of gravity and buoyancy is behind the center of lift. Just whenever you have a blimp, you're unstable. And uh, well, the classic cigar short statement. It's pretty hard. Well, I mean, once if you're going to have something hanging under underneath a buoyant object, it's pretty darn hard to figure out. I don't know how you figure out to get the center of fluency to match your center of lift. Uh, I'm not sure there is a machine that has that. Actually, it's not all that hard to computers. Well, I mean, okay, I know there's artificial. Okay, let me stop for a minute about what's classified. Okay. Uh, it's been done. You, you mean just, the stability you know, or the shape? There, what? The, the shape or the stability? The stability. It is highly affected by shape. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's locky, but I think so. Somebody is developing a just basically two cigars shaped stuck Sorry, together. Lucky. Yeah, lucky. There's a British company that really started that. Yeah. yeah. They went to that because it has certain stability benefits, as long as you only tilt it a few degrees. But as you tilt, it very rapidly becomes a negative effect, and you certainly want to do that. It's unstable. You're just, no. it's pretty hard. Yeah. The center of lift of the buoyancy is always going to be about in the center of the thing that you made. Right. And the center of lift is always about 25% back from the front. Yeah. So you're always well, unstable, and they, they pretty yeah. much rely on the yeah. time derivative of like how long does it take to become unstable and how fast can the man rotate the thing. Right. And, uh, yeah. and so you have to have artificial or human control, but eventually it can be swamped by wind that's too strong. Or you have to have incredibly powerful control systems with giant surfaces uh, that are all moving. Okay. And uh, just, that's really you know, the big bummer. Just about everybody is who's in that field is going to four big fans strictly for that reason. So you can have power control. Have power control. Uh, there is somebody else, and I can't remember who, I believe it was a German firm who actually put a huge pump inside of a Zeppelin. The idea was you had enough fuel on board and the capability of pumping that fuel fast enough that if you could do it, there was one little problem. You burned your fuel and there went your control. <laughs> Have you guys seen this uh, concept? I just got a briefing on it at Oshkosh. It's a dirigible. But it's also a wing, and it gets about half of its lift from the wings and half from the uh, displacement of the dirigible. And it's uh, it's huge. It's a thousand feet big, and it's got uh, it's got six or eight uh, oh, C-130 engines. One of those. Triple Air research, yeah. <clears throat> Kind of interesting. The theory was that uh, it could operate off of a runway, and since it was heavy, you could actually taxi it around, and you weren't too worried or as worried, I guess, about it crossing. So it's heavier than air. It's, heavier than air. it's half a kind of half each. It's uh, the guy that designed it. Uh, is it right here? He's a. Uh, Something. And anyhow, it, uh, it was just a concept. I'm kind of an aerodynamicist, and if you look at the difference between the Reynolds number and the plant and the Reynolds number going over the wing, and I don't know what you do with the wing uh, dirigible. And you get two boundary layers there and wildly different runs. Anyhow, kind of interesting concept. Can I, can I throw one suggestion in here? If I gave you guys a little bit more cable in that microphone, could you pass the mic around just so the webcast can listen in? Sure, sure, yeah. Okay, let me get, get you. Um, so your question is why aren't blimps like being used? Um, more like, what do you think about if this industry, how, how this industry is going to appear the first step? People are talking about it, but not that many are like making this. What do you think about it? 
rooms can lift up, except for the fact that you said right now, they can lift up huge weights. Uh, they're not fast, of course, in the things that lift them, but they can travel over like rigged territories. Why aren't they being used and why aren't they making it? Like, pretty much, what do you think about the business aspect? How, how can we make this a fair? Well, if you're moving goods around, you care about fuel costs. You know, the air sure. travel is very expensive because of that. Also, like, um, I mean, ship, ships are probably a lot better. I don't know how blimps would compare. Uh, yes. Over ocean, what if you're over Canada? Yeah, logging is what they've always wanted to do in Canada. Yeah. And that's a classic helicopter use because helicopters are, are already a weird niche market that's kind of like a blimp. Usually, they end up comparing it to a helicopter, a heavy lift. And that's Aren't helicopters more expensive? I mean, you have to like write a statistic. Well, except for that none of the blimps have ever been successful. You know, only yeah. on paper are the blimps more successful. But uh, um, they run it. We talked about the wind and being unstable. Yeah, there's all that's related to where do you store it when you're not using it. Which um, is now you need a blimp hanger. Uh, but also, helium is one of the smallest molecules <laughs> they make, and they use helium to find leaks because it leaks out of everything. So if the gas company wants to test the line or something, they pump it full of helium. Yeah, helium yeah. So helium costs a lot of money, too. So some people tried to get away from helium by using ammonia or gas or hot air. Uh, they need more of it or more fuel. So it's not impossible, and I think a lot of people would like to succeed at it, but uh, I don't know how. I think to be economically viable, um, oh, sorry. helium is getting to be a very expensive resource. It's a very limited resource. You can't just pull it out of the air and diffuse everything. Helium actually comes from natural gas wells. Um, and that's where the source of helium is. And uh, the strategic helium reserve was sold off, um, or being sold off since uh, 1993 or four. I can't remember when. Congress passed that law because we couldn't figure out why the Navy needed a strategic helium reserve anymore since they hadn't flown flown since the 30s. Um, but it was a great moderating factor in terms of the price uh, of helium around the world. But now it's it's it, uh, it's been sold off, um, and most of the helium is actually uh, vented from natural gas wells. It's not captured. Uh, saying that, there's been a big push in the in the balloon community to go back to hydrogen, uh, and there are a lot safer ways to actually work with hydrogen. Uh, than there were with silver-coated painted balloons, <laughs> which is, was the big problem uh, with the Hindenburg. So if you're going to look at uh, economic uses of, of blimps or dirigibles or rigid airships, it's back to hydrogen. Uh, and so you know, might want to look, look back to that from a business case perspective. The, uh, <clears throat> the real problem with Hydrogen is not technical, but the fact that every time you say anything about it, the insurance industry immediately says, remember the Hindenburg, and the project dies right there. No one will insure the hydrogen. Oh, the well, humanity. <laughs> well, for, for logging in Canada, I think they're up for almost anything. You know, yeah. Yeah. you probably yeah. could do it. Absolutely, and, and, and with the size dirigible balloons that you're going to demonstrate in the logging community you can self-insure. Uh, you know, the probability of hitting something on the ground that's actually worth anything um, is, is, is quite low uh, in those remote areas. It's the same reason why we fly suborbital space vehicles in the middle of the Mojave Desert and not over the oceans. So the probability of loss on the ground is quite low. Maximum probable loss is well under three million dollars. And you know, you, people can self-insure around that. So. I'm not sure I remember names right with my ancient memory, but uh, this briefing I saw on the half and half, uh, the economics per ton mile, not taking into account the time for uh, like a 747 versus a ship, I think was four orders of magnitude, ships four orders of magnitude cheaper. Mm -hmm. And this uh, half and half dirigible concept anyhow was was two orders of magnitude, so it is economic, but I'm not sure anybody's got a real handle on the full operating cost. Both hydrogen and helium pretty hard to keep in a container. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I think 
guess when they made the hybrid ones with a lot of helicopter engines, it had some disastrous accidents, as you can see. Um, I mean, the problem is you start putting more engines on them, you're, now you're fighting this huge thing that, that, to push yourself up in the air. That you, Now you've got all these engines, you wish this giant uh, gas bag wasn't there, because now it's in the way. Pretty soon, you're pretty much it's getting smaller and smaller, and now you're at ad altitude, and you wish you could go faster, so you probably want to get rid of this huge gas bag. Pretty soon, you're back to an airplane. Uh, so I'm just not sure. I'm not sure it really pencils with the, the hybrid thing. Uh, and maybe why it never happened. That's not to say that I couldn't come up with some brilliant way of finally making it happen. But uh, I think that looks pretty grim. John, John hires a help. But the big design problem with John hire is the lifting gas expands. So you end up with a great big frontal area to take advantage of the lifting gas, yeah, you got to have points and stuff that have things called balloonets or something. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. internal balloons. Yeah, so when the gas expands, it forces the air out of these internal balloons. But, uh, so you end up... It is 1.30, just so you know. So you have people uh, waiting for the next pod. So okay. if you wouldn't mind wrapping it up and then uh, getting on to the next topic. If it was Basically. interesting enough, feel free to remake this pod or something similar interesting came out of this pod up on the board and continue the conversation.